All right, no time for screwing around. We've got quite the show for you today. Uh, the more I wait, the more I get frustrated as continuing uh, floods of predators keep coming into my inbox. Now, for some reason, uh, Wizards of the Coast doesn't seem to care about this, and I think I might know why. So let's let's take a look at just a little bit of what's going on uh, with with magic right now. Actually, really, I mean, um, let's take a look at just a couple of of things now. Uh, before I before I get into this, obligatory, do not contact these people. This is about Wizards of the Coast and Channel Fireball refusing to background check their employees and judges. This is not about any of these people and the crimes they've committed. The justice system has taken care of them, so please do not contact them. Don't harass them. Just don't. This is we can't lose sight of what's important here, and that's ultimately player safety. That isn't us being right. That isn't anybody having to eat crow. This is just about getting the right systems in place to protect the players. I barely had to dig at all. Uh, what, the last 36 hours? Um, many of you have been sending things to the Watsi asked for this at gmail.com. And I have to say, I'm appalled. We start with Ross Prajznir, convicted of dissemination of photos, videotapes, computer depictions, and films of child pornography, as well as possession of child pornography. Convicted 11 24, 2014. As of 2016, he was still listed as an active judge. Um, he had celebrated his five-year anniversary as a judge in May of 2016. Here is a list of just some of the events he served at. You can see he actually was a judge at the ARG Circuit Series in Philadelphia in 2016. This is a man who was convicted in 2014. He was serving in January 31st, 2015, a convicted uh, he was convicted of being in possession of child pornography, still serving as a judge, and he's not DCI banned. That means he could still play in any sanctioned Magic the Gathering event, unlike someone who might post memes. To show you that the Magic Judge program knows about him and was actively trying to scrub them, I caught them in a lie. On the left, you'll see... The Google cached version of the 2016 anniversaries, you can see Ross listed right here, Lansdale, United States. And in the updated version, oops, he's gone. Now, they didn't make any kind of statement about removing him or banning him or anything. They just quietly removed him. Too bad. So sad, Magic Judge. You people are disgusting. Whoever's in charge of this is Gross. How could you scrub this man and act like you never? I mean, this guy is judging 2015, 2014, 2016. He was convicted in 2014. They don't care. I, I mean, I don't have kids, but I don't want my kids even in the same room with somebody who jerks off to that kind of stuff. It's disgusting. Sam Strauss. We can see him featured here as a level three Magic the Gathering judge. Featured in a Gathering Magic video, oops, he pled guilty to using electronic means for child sex crime of porn and taking indecent liberties with a child. He, had, he has since been scrubbed from the judge website. Uh, however, he does not appear on the DCI ban list, meaning he could still participate in any organized play he wishes. This is a man that, as far as I understand the criminal case, was caught up in a To Catch a Predator-like sting, which is fitting um, because, as I've always said, these predators look for positions of power. There's a shocking number of the people in this list that were school teachers, high-level judges. These aren't level one judges that are getting caught. They're level three. That's the top of the mountain right now. And... Uh, and Channel Fireball and the judge program continues to refuse to 
even background check their people. And I'm going to show you why in a little bit. Jason Long. As far as I know, uh, I was told he was a judge, but I couldn't find anything about it. That's either here nor there. The point of this video is to show you that with just a tiny bit of digging, there are predators amongst us, amongst our children in the Magic the Gathering community, and Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast, Channel Fireball, Star City Games, the Magic Judge Association would rather worry about people posting memes, apparently, than protecting the player's safety. In 2000, so he's a local game store owner, appeared to be WPN certified by my, um, my investigation looked like he held sanctioned magic events and he was allowed to return to his store even after being convicted he was charged with sexually abusing a teenage boy paying $100 to engage in a sexual act and in fact it actually wasn't the felony charge against him that made him lose the store no it was the fact that he was $24,000 in debt to the property managers a little more about this winner in 2005 he was arrested and charged with criminal sexual abuse in Cook County for performing a sex act on a 14-year-old, according to court, court records, Long was 19 at the time and was convicted. He last registered as a sex offender in Cook County in 2015. However, in February 2016, he opened a game store, which he hosted weekly gatherings where visitors could play card and tabletop games. So this is a registered sex offender selling magic cards and other tabletop games. Nobody cared. I could do this all day. David Park, level three Magic the Gathering judge, sentenced to three years in prison in December 2015. He was a teacher who molested two of his students. He does not appear on the DCI ban list. And you can see as up, up until February 2015, he was regularly judging events. Worked with MTG Deals. He was a judge on the Pro Tour. Um, nobody cares, right? Uh, this, this man was not publicly admonished. He was not banned. Nothing. Uh, quietly, he still exists on the website, although they are beginning to scrub as I continue to point these people out. But I am so far ahead of them. I have more people I haven't even put out there yet because I'm making sure to check my list and, uh, and, and be very certain. Now, this next person uh, is a little... Uh, I was unsure about putting this person on there, but the point of the matter is this person is technically a convicted convicted of a sex act um he now works for star city games um he he's a former teacher imagine my shock convicted of sex with a student uh six counts felony counts of sex with a student um he is the in-store programs manager at star city games as far as i can tell um now the reason this one's a little dicier i mean is because the student was 17 but that really, I can't really, you can't make any excuses for that. This is a person in a position of power who took advantage of that power to have sex with an underage student. It's it, it's absurd. It's disgusting. And I don't know if this person is a judge, but again, he works for one of the largest uh, Magic the Gathering outlets in the, in the country. And again, they clearly must not have any background checks, or if they do, they didn't care. I wouldn't hire somebody who did this, but... I guess that's up to them. Now let's get to the top and why maybe some of these people, maybe this is why Magic the Gathering doesn't want to do background checks and the judge program. Here is Ricky Hayashi, the head of the judge program, and his ex-wife, Tasha Jameson. And I'm going to read some of this to you because it's, it's kind of disturbing. <laughs> I need to make something completely unambiguous. Many of you know that Ricky Hayashi and I were a long-term relationship. By the way, she's also a Magic the Gathering judge. We were together for over four years, which spanned the time where I met many of you. We were married in 2014. Some of you attended and separated later that year. I haven't talked much about the circumstances of that separation, but for my own reasons, I feel the need to do so now. Ricky Hayashi is not my friend. He is not my former lover over whom I fondly reminisce. Ricky Hayashi is my abuser. Uh, 
Less than three months after our wedding, Ricky Hayashi acted out violently at our home. When I told him about how much he frightened me, he act, reacted badly. I took steps to protect myself by leaving our home for the day. He continued to react badly, so I opted to not return that evening out of fear. When I refused to ignore what happened, he blamed me for, quote, leaving him despite the energy I invested in our marriage and my clearly expressed desire to return home when I felt safe doing so. Less than six months after our wedding, while I still actively worked towards reconciliation, I found out that he had begun an affair with Sarah Ellis. I do not know when exactly their relationship started, but I do know that it was certainly before he made any indication to me that he wasn't interested in reconciling. Uh, or that he wanted our marriage to end. Again, to be completely explicit, Ricky Hayashi engaged in an extramarital affair with Sarah Ellis. This became after this came after more than a year of erratic and abusive behavior towards me, apparently based on my interest in ethical non-monogamy, despite my honoring his desire for monogamous relationship. So she's into, into married group sex, and he still cheated on her. When I found out, I asked for a, uh, if he wanted a divorce. He refused to answer. When I told him that I wanted one and he understood the work the, and expanse of hiring a lawyer myself, I was afraid of appearing in court with him or of what he might do if he knew where I lived. So I consulted with several lawyers before finding one who had some experience with domestic violence cases and understood the procedure of keeping my contact information confidential while filing. Once... I had this process underway. Ricky Hayashi was slow to respond to my lawyer's requests, although I did not ask for any marital support and relinquished my claim to many of our joint assets. During this time, I learned from my peers that the judge in the judge program that Ricky Hayashi and Sarah Ellis had begun living together. I assume she must be a magic judge as well. The divorce proceeding is still underway, and he and I have each signed off on a stipulated judgment. I have not yet received the final decree of divorce. And I didn't know how much longer it will take. Doesn't sound like Ricky Hayashi is a very good respecter of the women. Um, and what I'm told from my insiders in the judge community is nobody cared about this. Where were all the where was all the listen and believe? Uh, you have a woman, an ex-wife, coming out speaking very plainly about domestic abuse, and uh, this man is now the head of the judge association. Program coordinator Ricky Hayashi on diversity in the judge program. Imagine my shock that this guy would share a lot of the same beliefs as your as male feminists. Let's look at one paragraph in his article from July uh, earlier this year. There is a gender imbalance in those fields, just as there is in judging. It's because groups in power self-select to their own norms. If you have a majority of men in power, they will tend to bring more men to the power structure and they won't even realize it. This is why I draw the line between diversity and representation. It's one thing for the community to be accepting of diversity, which I think is true in the magic community at large, as well as the judge program, and another for the organization to take a long look inward and address these imbalances of representation. One example that crosses my interest is the research done on how women receive more vague feedback than men. This hurts when it comes to their advancement because it is specifics that drive these interactions, both in terms of helping people improve and the highlight the strong work that makes people candidates for advancement. So again, he acknowledges that it's hard to fight for more representation and diversity in terms of accomplishment, such as diversity in the Pro Tour, but they can do it in the Pro Tour judges. So he is a man who cares about optics. He is a man who believes in equality of outcome, not equality of opportunity. And this man allegedly abused his wife. This man is in charge of the judge program. This man has every ability to demand his judges pass a background check and is refusing to do it. Wizards of the Coast is refusing to be involved despite immense pressure by all of you. Channel Fireball is refusing to background check their judges 
Star City Games refusing. Nobody's stepping up. And everybody's ignoring this because I'm the one breaking the story. Well, I'm sorry. This is goes way beyond personal feelings. My peers in the Magic the Gathering community, Talarian Community College, the Mana Source, nobody's talking about this. I've just shown you several sex offenders that are among us or were among us. Now, it's an important distinction to, to note that uh, from what I can tell, many of these people are either in jail or not active anymore. But the takeaway is they were not deactivated due to their behavior. They were allowed to exist because, in fact, you know, there's nothing currently in place stopping them from becoming a judge again. We saw with that level three judge in Canada who was sexually harassing a player was given an open door to return. I should have put him in here. He was given an open door to return as long as they believe he had sufficiently improved his behavior. This is a man in a position of power sexually harassing a player of the game, and they've said, well, he's welcome to come back as long as we're convinced he's good. None of these people were given lifetime DCI bans. None of these people were spoken out against publicly by the judge program, Wizards of the Coast, Channel Fireball, or anyone else involved. This has to be addressed. 